It's an interesting aspect you talk about um, the lending activity in general and investments. There's been a recent study from uh, Bank of America, Mary Lynch, um, saying that the fund managers they interviewed, uh, the majority um, is s looking at cash. And I think the cash level of these funds is at a high we haven't seen since July 2012. Now, that doesn't really spur a lot of confidence, if you ask me, when it comes to the investment activity. Well, I think we're moving into another arena as, uh, uh, at um, asset valuations, and, and this is a completely different uh, type of conversations, but uh, um, exactly for the reason I'm saying that uh, uh, more companies have access to the capital markets and asset prices have grown both the equity in the equity sector and in the credit sector because credit spreads have, have come lower then maybe some investors uh, are trying to rebalance their investment decisions. I, I think that is a, it's a fair point that is made at each point in time of the investment cycle. But um, um, another point which should be a clear signal of uh, normalizations is, for example, the high yield market. So uh, some investment uh, grade companies or unrated companies that uh, in Europe had difficult access to the capital markets are now able to restructure their capital base uh, and rebalance the mix of bank debt and capital market funding, and which is tremendously important. So we've heard uh, um, Abby Cohen uh, this morning, she was mentioning that two-thirds mm -hmm. of, uh, if, uh, if I got that right, two-thirds of uh, the company's debt is a capital market debt, um, as opposed to two-thirds uh, being bank debt in Europe. Sorry, th th she was referring to the U.S. market, which is, uh, you know, quite a long way uh, away from the European market. And, but I think that the, with the combinations of low interest rates and uh, low credit spreads, you are seeing a greater number of intermediate com uh, SMEs having access to the bond market, which is tremendously healthy because it gives them more confidence about their business plan on how to be implemented without the worrying of a shakeup in the banking system that may suck up liquidity, you know, uh, overnight, which, you know, hopefully is never going to be the case again. Yeah, I, I totally agree. And, of course, building that confidence, with, which you've mentioned now a couple of times, um, what should help that is the asset test. Now, we just had the Fed asset test, five banks failing again. Uh, so many years down the line when it comes to um, new regulation, we, here in Europe we have Basel III, etc. The asset quality review from the ECB is about to come up. Well, does it really matter these days whether the stress test has a good outcome or not when it comes to the trust element? Well, I, I, I think this is a, a falls into the, the we're, we're moving into a, a new environment in which we will have a uh, single regulator for the larger banks, um, we, uh, the global CFI will have additional layer of capitals um, that need to be uh, put in place. Uh, there will be a system of uh, um, supervisions of, of the crisis situations, the weekend crisis weekends, um, how things should be managed and, and the European fund uh, of say 55 billion, if I'm not mistaken, um, available in in case of need. But clearly, I think that the, the what we are going through is a process that, to complement this weaponry, uh, there needs to be um, and there is uh, underway uh, um, a pretty thorough process of balance sheet cleaning, uh, in order to face the stress test in uh, with you know uh, their house in orders and this is why i think uh, we're seeing uh, some npl devaluations some, some more proactive approaches to npl managements uh, and and you know capital raising subordinated debt in the capital market so it's i i think it's all part of a more um disciplined approach uh, uh, to you know bank balance sheets